Hello, I'm Mike Levin from Inwood, Manhattan, and I'm here to do an unboxing video today of the CU Box, the Q Box i4 Pro. It was sent to me all the way from Israel. I bought it for about 150 bucks, and then the Raspberry Pi 2 was announced, and they dropped it to 130, but such is life. So, I'll start out right here on the elevator. Here we are on the sixth floor. These are my final days in this uh, office. So I'm trying to get the, uh, the most value out of it I can. And these unboxing videos are certainly one of the ways to do it. Six seventy five for everyone who's never going to visit me. I'm out of here April first, and uh, I have a Raspberry Pi B plus running here. This is what actually was running MikeLevinSEO.com until I discovered GitHub, and you can actually even see uh, it's still running here on the IP. I've got a nice static IP. And this was the one page site I had for a while. And uh, so today, I will hopefully be replacing that by something a little bit more sexy. Oh, by the way, it's uh, running right here on my daughter's uh, Hello Kitty HDMI monitor. This is literally the first time I've ever had a monitor connected to the Raspberry Pi. I've been running it completely headless, but uh, you know, it's Arch Linux here. I don't even need the mouse, but I brought a mouse in here just so that I could, you know, uh, demonstrate the Qbox, because I'm not going to make the Qbox run as a, uh, as a headless computer for this demo, because a large part of its appeal is unlike the Pi, which doesn't come in a housing and it sort of appeals to the maker community and it's used as a component for projects and such. The uh, Qbox comes in a slick uh, plastic case. It's been called Sexy and I can't wait to see it in person. The pictures on the internet are just beautiful. And this model that I got is the i4 Pro, they call it. And it's a quad core, uh, one gigahertz A9 Cortex processor. So the, the B2 that's on its way, Element 14 just contacted me, it's a quad core A7. So it's Cortex A7, not this one, but the B2, uh, the next model, and the Cortex A9. The Pi will be running at 900 megahertz, and this device at one gigahertz. So there you have it. It's got two USBs as opposed to the Pi's uh, four. That's a kind of an issue because mouse and keyboard and bam, you're done. You got to start using a USB hub. This looks like that might be an SATA hard drive port a mini USB, uh, HDMI. I'm not sure about that. Is that an SD? Yes, it is. That is an SD card port, which is fantastic. It means that you can swap out the whole personality. Whoops, I just shot it across the room. You can change the whole personality of these things by just putting in what are, you know, nearly equivalent to game cartridges, which is one of the great appeals of the Raspberry Pi. It is not any one computer. People who talk about multi-boot on the Pi, I tell them, no, don't multi-boot, just make multiple SD cards. Make your life easy, uh, use it how it was intended to be used. So, without further ado, I will unplug. This is how you turn off a Pi, by the way. Bam. Sigma lost, and we will take its uh, HDMI port, put it in this guy's HDMI port. Oh, not the SATA port. 
And then our network port. So we should have an internet connection when first this power's on. Let's get that out of the way. A little picture of my daughter on one of those, uh, what do they call them? Instax Fuji films that are at Urban Outfitters so much these days. And here's my power supply. This is the uh, power supply I got for the Pi back in the original days when I was so concerned about uh, amperage. Uh, this is two amps, which is far in excess of the uh, uh, 750 milliamps that the Pi's used. But the Pi's used back in those days, the Pi 1, which by the way, I have right here. Don't want to take too many uh, tangents, but this Pi 1, uh, the the Pi Plus and then the Pi 2 will be in on its way. So I'll do a, all three uh, lined up in a row. But that took uh, 750 milliamps. And this only takes, I think, 700 or, or even less. So the point is, is that you couldn't just use any Motorola charger, which was the popular thing in those days for the uh, old Raspberry Pi. But the new one, you can. They got the amperage down. And that's the charger I got when I was concerned about amperage. And I have since become a lot less concerned. I use the port on my Mac for powering the Pi. I use anything. You know, you can power a Pi off of just about anything. You can make a Pi portable by powering it off of one of these. Okay, do not forget the keyboard and mouse. This is a Unicomp. Uh, buckling spring keyboard, and for keyboard connoisseurs, uh, you might be interested. It's the most satisfying keyboard ever made to type on. So I put in the keyboard, and then the mouse. This is something I don't have in my office very often. I had to go looking for a mouse. Uh, my laptop or my uh, MacBook Air uses uh, the trackpad. And uh, I'm in Vim all day, basically, the Vim text editor. So I don't use a mouse, which is actually quite liberating when you're coding. You get into the zone. You know, Getting into the zone is required for doing talented programming if you're doing anything more than just, say, copy and paste. And stopping to grab the mouse and highlighting text and you know, it just totally interrupts the flow. So anyone who's an aspiring programmer uh, I recommend you consider jumping on that, that bandwagon of the Vim text editor and put yourself on a path for life that's just really uh, uh, exciting. Uh, and a whole different paradigm shift and way of thinking. Oh, that's interesting. It's, uh, I think, an optical port, is that? And I, I believe this has, yes, yeah, right there, it's an IR blaster. So this is really designed for doing uh, home projects where, you know, you can do home automation. This IR blaster can be controlling your TV or anything else that takes a remote control. I mean, your air conditioner, really. Uh, the thing can be just generically programmed. The popular thing for devices like this to be used for uh, really is uh, X. BMC, Xbox Media Centers. And that's kind of like the cheap consumer way to, to, to make use of these tiny little, you know, uh, under $150 uh, microservers at home. The Pi is $35. This is $150, but you get a faster processor. Okay, without further ado, uh, there is a power supply floating around for this thing that I, I know I pulled out of that box. Is that it? Yes, that is it. And I presume that turning it on is very similar to turning on a Raspberry Pi. That is plugging it in. Yep, and I saw a light come on. Okay. First power up. See if there's any lights flickering. Oh, you can see the IR light. You can see the optical port light. No other lights to speak of flickering, but you certainly can tell it's on. Okay, there's a more traditional boot screen. It's 
saw a logo there for a second. Open ELEC. This is uh, embedded Linux of the sort that I keep advocating. Uh, you know, Linux isn't always going to have, oh, look at this. The wizard will guide you through the process of setting up your new Open Elec installation, setting your location, time zone, and connecting you to the internet. These settings can be changed later by navigating. Okay. English. Okay, the mouse is actually connected. It's not too responsive. That's probably because my junk mouse. Let me see if I have something, the surface to use it on. Maybe a notebook. That might work. Nope, not any better. Uh, da, 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 da. Cardboard notebook. Ah, much better. Okay, next. Host name. I'll keep that. Why not? Defaults. Try and make the experience as straightforward as possible. Networking. That's going to be its address on the internal network. Sharing and remote access. Oh, default user's root. Okay, this is going to be set up as an SSH server. That's uh, good news for me. Oh, it, the file sharing. You can drop, use it as a file server out of the box. Let's see, SSH. Oh, that can be turned on and off. Okay, yeah, well, we definitely want that on. I want that on. That's the one place I'll uh, diverge from the default. Let me get rid of some of the uh, ugly stuff there so you're not looking at quite a jumble of wires. Still rather jumbly. So what? Hello, kitty. Hmm. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Next. Thank you. Installation complete. All right. Let's see if they've got any videos pre installed. I'm sure that's what a lot of people will like to see right off. Menu off to the side of this window that contains extra options to access. Navigate to the left. What with your remote control or place your mouse there? Okay, so there are remote controls available for this. That's interesting. There's our extra menu. Playlists, video add-ons, playlists, party mode, new playlists, party mode, playlists. Okay, cancel. I doubt there's any video that would be surprised if they do, did that. Uh, also, it's going off the left of the screen a little bit. I'm not sure if that's something having to do with the system or my monitor. But at any rate, uh, pictures. Okay, well, it's kind of like a media center that they uh, that they have here, and uh, system settings. Oh wait, let's look at programs, see if they give you any programs initially. Configuration, get more. Okay, well, here's some things you can get. Interesting. Well, you get the idea. Uh, I'm not going to go and uh, install a bunch of stuff and extend the video unnecessarily. We're already at 16 minutes. Uh, it's uh, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, it's certainly going to be a, a more than capable uh, headless web server if I end up using it that way, and particularly a, a Pipulate server. Uh, the product I'm working on is something you're going to be able to just, just like this, you know, hook to the back of your uh, Wi Fi router, which is where this uh, yellow cable is going and access it from home and uh, use Pipulate from your private internal network. And uh, when you're off and away, the scheduling bits will be carrying out the job on your own dedicated server. And uh, this, is a, this is a great way to get started. It's a little bit pricey as far as the microservers are concerned, only because of the Raspberry Pi. And tune back in in hopefully a few days 
I hope it's not weeks. I just heard from Element, and they asked for my address for shipping it out. I thought I received it, but it was actually something else I received. But I'll be doing the lineup of the original, the, uh, the plus, and then the two, which is a quad core uh, Cortex A7 running at 900 megahertz, quad core Cortex A9 running at one gigahertz, 150 bucks. Uh, down to 130 the day the uh, Pi 2 was announced, $35. So thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>